a very happy morning to everyone as you know we are celebrating merry ward week from 23rd to 30th of january during this week we are highlighting the various virtues practiced by mother merry ward throughout her life the virtue over which we are going to focus today is take all even the least thing as coming directly from god life is a mixture of periods of joy and sorrow if we welcome the bliss and happiness in our life we also need to accept the pain and grief as part of life we gladly accept the mercy coming from god but refuse to accept any pain and discomfort we easily get crushed and overtaken by our troubles and hardships but we need to take everything happening in our life as a part of god's plan and accept both happiness and sadness as god's will life of mother mary ward is one of the biggest example for this she faced many trials throughout her life but always remained unfazed by it she was born at a time of severe repression where catholics practicing their faith were put into prison she lived in an era where religious women were bound to strict enclosures she was imprisoned by the same church she loved so much her schools were closed down records were burned her entire life work was destroyed and she was even branded as heretic for her revolutionary beliefs but she never complained to god and always remained a loyal servant of the church she learned to accept everything from god's hand she took all the events taking place in her life as part of god's plan and faced all the challenges and obstacles with courage optimism and faith her firm belief that women in time to come will do great things has been an inspiration for centuries to women following in her footsteps even in the 21st century nearly after 400 years she is still remembered as a prophet of hope thus everything that god allows to come our way is always with a purpose nothing can happen without god's permission and god will not allow a difficulty unless has a divine purpose for it god has a reason for allowing things to happen we may never understand his wisdom but we simply have to trust his will so keep your peace and accept everything happening in your life as god's will god has a plan for you trust it live it and enjoy it god bless you
Konosuke was born on November 27, 1894 in a small village in Japan. His father was a small farmer but a prominent member of the community. Konosuke enjoyed a comfortable early childhood. But life took an ugly turn in 1903. His father lost everything in gambling. They were forced to leave their village and move to a small house in the city. At the age of 9, in order to support his family, Konosuke had to leave his education and work in a small shop. He used to get up every day before sunrise, clean the store, help in running the shop, and then look after the children of his employer. But some years later, due to recession, the shop owner decided to close the shop. Konosuke then started working at a bicycle shop. Here, he used to earn enough to support his family. Konosuke was once again happy and satisfied in his life. He worked for about 5 years in this bicycle shop. But in 1910, he lost this job as well. Konosuke was again jobless. He was shattered. He started wondering, why me God? Why is God so unfair to me? But then destiny showed him a new path. He got a job in Osaka Electric Light Company. Electricity sector those days was booming with the invention of electric bulb. Here he got to learn a lot along with his work in the company. During his free time, he used to read books on electricity and conduct some experiments. Soon, due to his hard work, he rose to the position of technical inspector in the company, which was a very high post at that time. Once Konosuke experimented with himself and was able to create a new type of light socket. He was very excited on his invention and showed it to his boss but his boss was not impressed and rejected his socket saying that it would not be able to run in the market but konosuke had full faith in his product he took a big decision he left the security of his well paid job on June 15 1917 to set up his own small manufacturing company undaunted by his meager resources at the age of 23 he set up his small shop and started operating it from a garage he named it as Matsushita Electric Housewares Manufacturing Box He started manufacturing his light sockets in his garage and went door to door to selling them. But no shop owner was interested in buying his new sockets. Months passed by and he still was not able to sell his product. He sold his furniture and other assets and borrowed money to survive a little longer. He even thought of giving up and going back to his job. Then came a time when he was almost bankrupt. That's when a miracle happened. And out of nowhere, he got his first huge order of 1000 pieces. Konosuke recalls it as a life-saving and life-changing order. He never looked back after that. His company kept on growing and expanding. Today, with more than 250,000 employees and an annual turnover of around 70 billion dollars, 
we all know this company by the name Panasonic. Konoske is one of those few entrepreneurs who managed to build up a global enterprise in a single generation. You see, life is a combination of joy and sorrow. But it is important to remember that even when we are going through our tough times, God is working on His plan. Had Konoski not been terminated from his job at bicycle shop, he may have remained there for his life. Had his boss at Osaka Electric Company not rejected the design of his electric socket, he would have never founded Panasonic. So what appears to be things falling apart might actually be things falling at place. Thus, develop the habit of praising everything you receive from God. Sometimes, if things are not going your way and your plan is not working, that means God is working on His plan. God bless you. Lord, you are holy above all others, and all of the strength that I need is in your hands. I am not asking, Lord, that you take this trial away. Instead, I simply ask that your will be done in my life. Whatever that means, that is what I want. But I admit that it's hard, Lord. Sometimes I feel like I can't go on. The pain and the fear are too much for me. And I know that I don't have the strength on my own to get through this. I know that I can come to you, Jesus, and that you will hear my prayer. I know that it is not your intent to bring me to this point just to leave me in the wilderness alone. Please, Lord, give me the strength that I need to face today. I don't have to worry about tomorrow. If you just give me the strength that I need today, that is all I need. Keep me from sinning during this trial. Instead, help me to keep my eyes on you. You are the Holy Lord, and all of my hope rests in you. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. The Buddha took a walk along the forest path, simply enjoying the beauty of the earth. At the crossroad, he saw a man in grief praying earnestly. The man recognized the Buddha and fell on his knees. He cried, Lord Buddha, life is indeed bitter and painful. I was once a man with great wealth, living a life 
of ease and happiness. By trickery and deceit, those I trusted and loved took everything from me. I am now a wretched man with no one to turn to. How many more times must I be reborn into this world of suffering before I can be liberated? Pointing to the mango tree on that road, the Buddha said, Do you see that mango tree? You must be reborn as many times as the number of mangoes on that tree before you know the bliss of liberation from the sufferings of this fleeting world. Seeing that there are at least dozens of mangoes hanging on that tree, the man gasped, But Lord, I have lived a righteous life in accord with the precepts. Why am I condemned to suffer so much longer? The Buddha sighed. That is the way it must be. And he continued his walk. He came across another man praying by the road. And this man too fell on his knees and cried, Lord Buddha, life is indeed bitter and painful. I have lost all those I love to the king of death. I am now forlorn and lonely. Life is full of anguish. How many more times must I be reborn into this world of suffering before I know the bliss of liberation? The Buddha pointed to the field of wild flowers along the road and said, Before you know the bliss of liberation from the sufferings of this fleeting world, you must be reborn as many times as the number of flowers in that field. Seeing so many hundreds of flowers in the field, the man cried, But Lord, I have done many good deeds and I followed your teachings by heart. Why must I endure so much more suffering? The Buddha sighed. That is how it must be. And he continued on his way. When he came across a tamarind tree, another man fell down on his knees and cried before him, O oh Lord, life is full of suffering. During the days, I toiled like a slave under the scathing sun. At night, I have nothing to sleep on except a pile of grass on the cold, damp earth. Life is nothing but hunger, thirst and loneliness. How many more times must I be reborn into this world of suffering before I know the bliss of liberation? The Buddha looked up to the tamarind tree each branch of it bearing many stems, and each stem had dozens of leaves. The Buddha said, Look at the tamarind tree before you know the bliss of liberation from the sufferings of this fleeting world. You must be reborn as many times as the number of leaves on that tamarind tree. As the man looked up at the tamarind tree and its thousands of leaves, his eyes filled with tears of gratitude and joy. How merciful, he said, as he prostrated to the ground at the Buddha's feet. To this day, the tamarind seed are the symbol of faithfulness. You see, in life, in your life, a thousand lifetimes to some may seem like an eternity, but for some, it shall pass like a blink of an eye. Do not dwell in pain. Do not dwell in suffering. Do not dwell in hard times. Because just as the sun goes up and goes down every day, so too will your sufferings and your happy days exchange with each other every day for the rest of your life. Suffering is a given. But how we respond to it? How we respond to hard times? That is what defines us as humans. That is what defines our character. Be happy even during the worst days. And remember that after the darkest hour of the night, the sun always reappears. Back when I was a kid, I thought kids from God only came from church But the more that I live, the more I learn It's not always the way it works Sometimes you don't see it till you're looking back When you didn't get what you thought you had to have Cause he had a bigger plan than the one you had 
Yours didn't work out, and aren't you glad? When you take a look around, it ain't hard to find Everybody's got things that money can't buy If the ones you love are sitting right beside you Then I say you gotta lie The best things in life are straight from his hands Like a raising kids on a piece of land A little peace of mind when the day is done Where you think that comes from, that's gifts from God It makes you thankful for the hills that we climb, for the ways that we ride, for the lows and the highs, for the wrongs made right, for the songs we sing, for the dreams we dream. Makes you thankful for everything. When you take a look around, it ain't hard to find. Everybody's got things that money can't buy. If the ones you love are sitting right beside you, then I say you got a lot. On a piece of land, a little peace of mind When the day is done Where you think that comes from That's gifts from God Everybody's got things that money can't buy If the ones you love are sitting right beside you Then I say you got a lot The best things in life are straight from his hands Like we're raising kids on a piece of land A little peace of mind when the day is done Where you think that comes from, that's gifts from God Hallelujah, every day is a gift, gifts from God.